internet and welcome back to the Super Castlevania 4 playthrough. Looks like I'm finally finishing up this board game and I just need to move what looks like mm, 13 more spaces and I win! Now someone push the pop matic bubble and let's see what kind of insane crap this castle can throw at me this time. This is stage 9, which is Dracula's Treasury, though it looks like I stumbled into a level from DuckTales. Someone get Scrooge McDuck on a phone because I think you would enjoy checking this place out. It's almost like taking a dip in his vault of money, though I wouldn't actually try to dive in the money because, yeah, that would probably kill you. What does Dracula actually need with a treasury or even gold? I assume he's not a willing participant in the Transylvanian economy. I mean, look, now that we know that Dracula is rolling in cash, it does explain many of the things we've seen throughout this game, such as, you know, the awesome security fence in the beginning, those crazy giant chandeliers, the awesome killer collectibles he owns that I destroyed, and all the stabby devices in the dungeon level. He's definitely spared no expense. Hell, look at this. He can even afford gold skeletons and tons of these awesome diamond line draperies. What the hell are these draperies for anyway? Well, I suppose when you own a giant malevolent castle in the middle of the Transylvanian mountains, filled with crazy ghosts and monsters, obviously you need to decorate it with tons of draperies. But I digress. This level is actually one of my more favorite levels in the game. Not only for the scenery and level design, but also, in my opinion, it has one of the best stage songs in the game. The song in the background is up there with the first level music of this game, and it's not even a remix of an old tune. It's an original song. What is it with these weird ghosts in the background? Are they haunting all this gold? Well, I know one thing at least, that Dracula is a hoarder. And this is why his castle is in such shambles. I mean, have you seen those hoarder shows? All the houses they live in are in disrepair. This place is in total disrepair. Dracula's got some issues. I don't think a therapist can handle his issues, though. Dracula's definitely part of the 1%. I bet he's getting tax breaks and everything, too. Man, Dracula has so much gold, he actually makes crazy platforms made of gold pieces and jewels. As I said before, this game is never short on the crazy platforms. But it doesn't conveniently place bats and skeletons when I'm trying to carefully platform across areas like this. So it looks like we've entered mines of some sort. So, Dracula owns his own mine. No wonder he's swimming in gold. Not sure who was doing all the mining, though. But apparently he's storing the coffins of his dead victims down here. This whole area looks like something out of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Or kind of like Big Thunder Mountain from Disneyland. But without the coffins and skeleton dragons. So what I've learned is that this whole level is just one big ode to Disney. In fact, past levels of this game have also ripped off Disney. Maybe Disney needs to buy a Konami. Hell, they bought everything else. Wouldn't be surprised if they just started buying up game companies and start destroying more franchises. <laughs> Alright, more candle meat. Brought to you by Disney. Wow, look at this! Dracula owns his own giant pool of gold! Eat your heart out, Scrooge McDuck! I suppose the Skeleton Dragon is basically the lifeguard on duty. He saves you from drowning by shooting fireballs at you, I guess. Fun fact, you can actually take a dip in this pool of gold. But I'm not going to waste my time doing that, even though I know you probably want to see it. Look, I just want to keep moving for the sake of the playthrough, okay? I've got stuff to do, you know, like cool Simon Belmont stuff, like swinging across this whole area, and also toying with man-eating coffins for my own entertainment. <laughs> ah, that was fun. Okay, apparently I've stumbled on Dracula's Tetris Lair. I suppose if I jump in here I might be able to create a Tetris. Nope, just got hit. Oh man, more of these stupid vacuum holes. Actually, I think there's a hidden room in one of these vacuum holes. Just gotta find it. Oh, I think it's in that hole on the ledge next to the coffin. And? Looks like I was right. Except this one isn't haunted by a hobo ghost or a dog. Okay, just pillaging stuff and hopefully I don't get sucked back in. Like that. Oh, hi coffin. Okay, moving on. Uh, what's really annoying are these suction holes, which are apparently strong enough to stop a powerful adult male. That's some crazy suction and air pressure. Well, I guess this happens because science. Uh, okay, suction, are, are you done? Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, I appreciate it, because I want to move on. So, as I continue through the last stretch of Dracula's gold mine, this gets me thinking. How much money is in this level? How rich does this make Dracula? Doesn't this kind of make him more rich than most nations on Earth? I mean, look, this is a lot of gold up in here. 
wouldn't people be really interested in this kind of wealth and maybe try stealing it from him? I wonder what a regular tax return looks like for him. I'm sure he has a lot of dependents, right? I wonder how much he gets per zombie or ghost demon. Again, why does he need all this money? He's a powerful freaking vampire. He's basically invulnerable. He can teleport places, so, you know, travel costs nothing. He doesn't really require sustenance, the same as humans. So wealth is kind of a moot point for him. So this brings up the vanity aspects, I suppose. He's got other priorities. It's all for looks and maybe getting chicks. Who knows? I mean, I'm sure the mortgage on this castle and property taxes are probably not cheap, especially when your castle's a gateway to hell. Well, at least we've reached the last part of the level before the boss, and I'm not sure I see an exit anywhere around here, and... Hey, get over here! Don't make me come after you! Meh. Well, I'll just come after all of you and destroy you! Damn boneheads. At least I got some candle meat for the effort. Okay, let's continue on to the boss, shall we? Okay, here we are. This boss is called Zafbat. And, of course, it's made of gold and jewels. So not only was I surrounded by all these riches this entire level, now I'm actually fighting Dracula's wealth in the form of a giant murderous bat. Go figure. I think I said something about priorities with Dracula's spending. I mean, there are some people who want to use their money to travel or feed their families, and there's some people who just want to own giant killer bats made of gold and jewels. Hey, to each their own, that's what I say. Oh, look! It spilled off into tiny bite-sized versions of itself. How cute is this? Well, this cuteness must not last. Eat boomerang, slackers! Ah! Yeah, one down, two to go. Okay. Move, parry, dodge, throw boomerangs, jump, and win! <laughs> yeah! Okay, posing, and done. Okay, that's an episode. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like or subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll catch you on the next one. By the way, that post was crap. Huh? What's that? Oh, hey! There's the exit! Sweet! Okay, well, I'm out of here. See you next time.